What's up, y'all? You're watching Union Minded. I'm your host, Eric, and today we're going to discuss how your local became a contractor's union. How did we allow for this nonsense to happen? And this is, again, if you're part of a contractor's union and you watched yesterday's video, you already know that I believe that we are the reason that we have a contractor's union. We didn't stay up on our game. But is it our fault? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the environment around you, which you come up in and form your thoughts. So I don't know if it's our fault. I just know we have to fix it. I know that much because I hate being part of a contractor's union. I can't stomach it. All it does is piss me off that we are a contractor's local. I'm trying my best to help change that along with many other folks who are tired of it. And we, we got a lot of work to do and I have a lot of faith in tomorrow. But today we're still a contractor's union and it sucks. So. Let's dive into this comment without further ado. Shakir writes, Could it be that through a century of federal legislation adverse to work to the workers' movement, collective bargaining has been placed in a straitjacket even Houdini can't escape? That the labor movement has decayed into a hallowed-out institution? Is it fair to say that the bureaucracy survives mostly for form and less for function? Mostly to the benefit of any who can buy and or bully and or bullshit their way into the ivory castles where transparency has been and is systematically reduced. I think that's true that bureaucracy does uh, survive for form because if you look at um, the administration, nothing really progressive and, and forward thinking and, and moving comes and originates from the administration. It's always from the membership coming up with ideas and usually the administration opposes those ideas. So I think there's a lot of truth in, in the statement and um, I think that the, the answer to the question is yeah, uh, we've been systematically uh, undercut and hurt. Is a local union now more of a client friendly organization? Again, it's a question proposed, yes. The labor union, as far as the IBEW is concerned, and I can only speak from my own experience here at Local 26, it is a client-friendly organization. I've seen and lived through business managers giving up concessions to contractors that made no sense and harmed the workers. I've seen it multiple times under different administrations. It wasn't just the current one. Under different administrations, concessions that hurt us. Um, I've heard language like Arnica Partners. Well, a partnership kind of infers that you're working together. It's, but since when were unions and management supposed to be friends? We're only friends to get the job done. But when it comes contract time and when it comes to splitting the economic pie, we are not friends. We are mortal enemies on opposite sides of the table. Trying to determine what's the fairest way to split the profits. We ain't friends. Get that terminology out of your head. We're not friends. Each member, save the faithful few, is now more of a client, apart from the group, instead of a part of the group. Each individual dealt with individually, each with different issues and leverage and different outcomes. Has the hierarchy of the local union systematically elevated themselves as they have systematically reduced their accountability? Yes. At the same time, have they pursued individual treatment of members as an alternative to group focus? Union meetings are mostly pro forma events required by law, more of a nuisance with little or no group input or influence. Workers merged into unions to avoid being treated as individuals. Has the pendulum swung back? Are the mega locals with their seamless elections and vague and often contractor-friendly enforcement of hiring systems and CBAs just a proxy for the monolithic power of employers that induced unions in the first place? Could it be that unions are in a straitjacket and union leaders are just making do as high-paid elitist labor brokers? Can we blame them so much as the client they are forced, as the climate they are forced to operate in? I think it's a little bit of both. Are unions in a straitjacket? Yes. Are union leaders just making do as high-paid elitist labor brokers right now? Yes. I've heard union leaders say things like, there's really no need for a union anymore. We really are just a temp agency. Think about those words. I've heard union leaders say that. 
And if that ain't the most antithetical statement to being a union leader I've ever heard, I don't know what is. And so, yeah, union uh, unions are straight jacketed and leaders are just making do as high paid leaders, labor brokers. I agree. With, I, I, I would answer that question as, yeah, that's kind of how it is right now. Sure. But does it have to stay this way? So if, if we read through this comment, we learn that we're in this situation because of legislation that has been passed after the Wagner Act. So the Wagner Act passed and it was, no, that's the National Labor Relations Act. It was a great law that helped to boost union density to a peak of 35%. Then came Taft Hartley and future amendments that put constraints on unionizing and put constraints on the way unions operate. So yes, legislation has hurt. But what has also hurt was union leadership getting into a position of power and then deciding that it was more beneficial for them to be friendly with the with the NECA partners and create this labor management alliance which undermines the very core of what it is to be in a union. We're not allied with management. That's that's nonsense. We're not. We don't have the same interests. We don't. My interest is to feed my family and provide a good life for them and to have a good standard of living. Their interest is to make as much profits as they can make. And if they can cut wages, they will. So my interest does not align with theirs. How can we be friends in a management alliance? Makes no sense. So yes, have we become a contractor's local? Yeah, when did it happen? Couldn't tell you, because when I got here, it was a contractor's local and nothing has changed. It's still a contractor's local. The difference that I'm trying to get across to you and how we make a difference is to reawaken the labor mindset that we had before all of the attacks were successful and dwindled our numbers down. Once we understand that we're in this together and that when I succeed, you succeed, and when you succeed, I succeed, and when they succeed, succeed, we succeed, when we get into that mindset, we'll stop all this nonsense of pointing figures, fingers and saying, I got mine, how'd you make out? We'll stop all of that. So how do we get here? Money and politics corrupted. Laws were passed that were corrupt and boss friendly. And attacks were made against unions to the point that even the bought and paid for president, Ronald Reagan, attacked unions so hard that he scared the crap out of union leaders in the 80s to form labor management alliances and further hurt unions. Is the damage permanent? No. Is it irre irreversible? No. Is it reversible? Absolutely. But it's on you and I. We got a lot to a lot of work to do. It starts with getting your ass out of your house and getting involved. Join me. Let's get involved and let's change things for the better. Don't let them tell you what we can't do. In instead, let's show them what we can do. My name's Eric. You're watching Union Minded. Remember that the fight's not left and right. It's up and down. It's going to take solidarity to win always. Each one teach one, get out there and reach one. And remember, there can be no union without you and I front and center. So let's go. Peace.